Well, you guys can definitely confirm now that it is a realistic hype screen. Or a load screen hype, as Miz would say. As we are into game, or round four, game four for us today. The brackets did advance a little bit. While we were waiting, of course, we did introduce our teams a little bit. We got locked up and got void boys. Of course, they won last round. Not going to go too much more into that because we talked about it before. If you're new to the cast, welcome. You can check the VOD on youtube.com slash dotaraptors, but most of that will be cut. So I guess I should probably introduce them anyways. Introduce them anyways. Of course, Void Boys won last round. And um, locked up. Corey, Ryanoop, EGA. Not sure who Tykan is or Bartlett, but uh, the other three. Definitely very common names throughout the NA Dota scene. And definitely respected names in the Dota scene. So... It's going to be a good match. Resolve VB, five. definitely strong, showing it last game. And at Nizcast will be with me, as always, guys, as I wait forever to introduce him to give you guys analysis and insight into this game. As I think, Niz, I may have just stumbled, recovered for the VOD, and it will be perfectly fine, because people who watch the VOD won't be confused as hell. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if... I, I was, like, waiting for you to introduce me, because I had, like, this... The whole thing I was going to say, and it was going to be funny, but it's long past. Oh, no. It's gone. Oh, oh God. Dota Raptors. That was my moment. That was my moment. I ruined it. Not only is it completely it. my fault that we wait, took this long <laughs> to start, but now it is also my fault that I ruined your moment. But, Niz, you were gifted another opportunity by the side of Locked Up as they picked up one of your favorite, if not your favorite, hero, Le Watermelon. Fun fact, he is indeed the best watermelon in Dota 2. At least top 2, for sure. I mean, who who competes? <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, that's what, that was my thought. I was like, who else is watermelon like? <laughs> Void Boys actually bands out, banned out Terrible and Lycan. And Centaur, Skyrath are the picks. We've seen this happen earlier today, did we not? I think it was round 1? Yes. Round 2? But it did not. The Skyrath Mage was not an immediate pick Ooh. afterwards. But no, no, um, they picked oh, a one-two. Whoa. whoa! I don't know what just happened. Oh wow! When you click on the abilities, it loads up the the screen that was well, supposed to try to load up the video, but Holy it's crap. failing hard. Anyways. Oh wow! Yeah, this is. Yeah, it's it's buggy. Volvo, nice try. Keep working. No, they there. added this with um. Five seconds remaining. Uh, the international. Oh, okay. Well, it just doesn't work very well, I guess, on my computer. But what I was trying oh, to God. what I was going to say is that this is a very, very old combo throughout six point seven nine, eight O and eight one. And it's very strong. Um Skyrath Mage was very popular a, a long time ago and then has kinda of died off and then got repopularized again in T I four. But yeah, Skyrath Mage and Centaur is incredibly strong. Uh, well tested and works well against what's coming out but Ravage Tidehunter or Ravage and uh, Witch Doctor can be incredibly devastating especially once Witch Doctor gets a certain threshold of farm. Um, Ag specifically very important for him but you know level 11 it, it can do enough damage it bounces once it can definitely do something but uh, the big thing is the Ravage and how well it sets up the rest of uh, the side for Locked Up Radiant team ban. Yeah, that's for sure. Actually seeing Visage getting banned out here, that's something we don't normally see. However, Void boy Boys, they ran it last game. And, uh, well, and we definitely know that last uh, last game, um, two of the members, Ryan Noob and EGA, were watching the stream. Five and were uh, watching their possible two opponents. So they were they were aware of what the other teams were playing. So definitely, I mean, respect ban can definitely be seen as like, oh, you know, oh, they're super scared of that player. No, you know, respect ban can mean two things. It can mean he played Visage well. Visage is a scary hero. We don't want to deal with that strategy. It's bad against. It's good against ours. Ban it out. Or it could mean he can carry the game with the Visage. So we're gonna ban it out. But in this case, it's definitely the former. Earthshaker and Pugna will follow. In the case, or or in the in the suit, Radiant going into that uh the band pool, and of course, Invoker, game picked up by Void Boys. Very interesting. Didn't see this last game. Saw it game two. Definitely worked out all right. Or was it game one? Eighth king. Yeah, it was game two. 
It, w it worked out all right, but it wasn't the best. As, of course, they did eventually just kind of get run into the ground by Gucci in the late game. Ten seconds remaining. You really think so? Five mm -hmm. seconds remaining. Now, what if he goes cross wax? <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay, so I've gotten yeah, this wind. Recover. This is uh, recover. This is a new up-and-coming Russian strat where they pick Medusa, and apparently it's it's winning games because Medusa is really strong and a really annoying hero to deal with. I didn't get I didn't get too much time to really look into it, but I got kind of the synopsis from two different people. So apparently this is this is a real thing. Well, I mean Medusa's I don't know why people hate on Medusa. Like yes, she's a hyper carry and it takes her a large threshold of farm to get to the point where people think about her, but in that transition there are ways to build her and play her that makes her makes her still useful at that time. Not to mention her ultimate makes physical damage do a crap ton more. What is Death Ward? Templar Assassin. Hmm. What is TA? Dire team pick. I like this draft right now. I like it's definitely working around the Medusa, and I like that. So if Medusa is a strong hero, it'll be proved here. If it's a weak hero, it'll definitely be proved here. She has a very strong draft around her, in my opinion. But Sand King is the pickup from Void Boys. Definitely a nice hero, but at the same token... Well, no, it's not that greedy. Uh, Skyrath Mage will easily set up ganks with Sand King. It's really not that greedy at all. Um, no, this is a, this is a strong... Yeah, very Combo. strong, very strong. Um, normally, Sand King is slightly greedy on his own, but of course, Sand King and Skywrath Mage make it so there is almost no greed Radiant at all. Team hmm. Shadow Demon. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, to be fair... I'm gonna try to go back the to the conversation they, I had earlier. To be fair, the last thing they want to worry about is getting caught. Right, remaining. and what's one good way, as we have another joining us, with the cast? Um, yeah, getting caught is like one of the scariest things, and Shadow Demon is actually an amazing hero at forcing fights. But um, I don't know. Interesting ban. Very interesting. Not a common hero, but again, I. It's Wraith King. Is, it's is, the hero. Where is it? Like, I, I don't know. They pick it, right? I mean, I, I assume they do, right? But I, I don't <laughs> know. That there's no other support for Void Ways to pick. Maybe they steal. They're going to go ahead and go with the Ember Spirit. And I mean, Ember Spirit's all right in this situation. There's a little bit of lack. Lack of guaranteed disable. Yeah, you have Ravage. Cask isn't that guaranteed. You're not going to always get people in stone form. They can look away from you and very easily resolve the situation. And of course... TA's traps are all right, but only really against the remnants. So I feel like this last pick needs to be a strong disable, and that also does kind of explain the ban on the uh, the Shadow Demon because Purge is actually really good against Ember Spirit. Yeah. I know I said traps aren't that good, but the reason why Purge is better is because Purge starts with a much higher percent slow, and also ends with the same percent slow, and it's all higher. It's like 60 or 70 percent slow when it's a Purge, so it's better than in, than traps. I feel like I should know this, but Flame Guard burns through refraction charges, right? You correct, correct. It does. It's it's enough instance damage. Ogre Magi. Okay, it's like Wraith King, except better. I mean, there's not. There is two of them, but not in the same. Two heads. Two heads. <laughs> two heads are always better than one. Yep. Two heads are always better than one. Two heads, two stuns, two kills. And we went over this before. Ogre Magi is officially the two bird with one stone hero as we do or no what am I saying one bird with two stones <laughs> as we have oh the irony of course I got that wrong on purpose but on the side of the radiant we have locked up aka Hup Holland Hup but uh, I think locked up is actually their official name we have blue player being Tyken picking up that Tidehunter looks like to be offlane Cory picking up the Ogre Magi support we have Bartlett picking up the Witch Doctor support in the mid lane we have EGA on the Templar Assassin, and finally that leaves Raya Noob picking up the Carry Medusa, and they are going aggressive with the Medusa. 
So I'll let you yep. talk about that some more after you get your introduction done, Niz. Okay, on the dire side, we have Void Boys, which we saw in the previous round. We have Omega Poner on the Sand King. We have Mercy Please on the Centaur War Runner. We got Bian or Bian on the Invoker. We I'm have so Cat sorry, guys. on the Ember Spirit. And we have <laughs> oh, the irony. Skyrath Mage on or fly on Skyrath Mage. Well, we've officially picked up Cat as our th as our third caster. I don't know if you heard him talking in the background. No, I didn't actually. But unfortunately, one of my roommates, Cat, snuck into the room and hopefully will <laughs> shut up soon. <laughs> but until then, guys, there's a cute fluffy cat in the background. Let your friends know the Dota Raptors stream comes equipped with cats, just Mercy. like the good studio. Mercy please is taunting Roche. Oh, he's done. I don't think you want to taunt Roche in 6.82. <laughs> He's like you're a okay when now. You're okay when you have the highest GPM in the game? Over 500, 400, 300. <laughs> it's going down, but potential action in the middle yeah, lane. Bartlett, Open. this could slow it up. DD, though, that's going to actually sway them away. And to be fair, Wish Doctor has insane base damage. And with a DD, he's going to hit like a truck. And you don't want to be anywhere near that when he's right clicking away. Bottom lane 1v1, Centaur Tide, a little bit of a change up. We don't see a Centaur Darks here. We did see that two times in a row, but we do have a Tri-V solo as the supports are rotating out. Of course, we were talking about how they're a very strong rotation combo, and they really are. Concussive Shot and Stun. Now we see the drawing out from Purple. They know that the supports are missing. They want mid to be aware. EGA knows. Oh. But the gank isn't coming mid, Niz. The gank is coming bottom. First Blood actually missed top lane. I'm sure that's why you said Ope, right? Yeah. Okay, well, thought, second blood. I'm going to make it as exciting as the first blood that I missed. <laughs> Bottom lane, Tidehunter is going to get absolutely... Well, you can see the blood splatter on the ground. It pretty much explains everything that I wanted to. But in top lane, Bartlett was able to secure first blood, and they're going to smoke up. They're going to go for their own kill, and honestly, I don't think the cat is aware enough of this. And there goes well, out the donkeys. casket. It's not going to bounce, bounce, and that's a big deal. And there is a Mel Strike though, the right clicks, a decent amount of minus oh, armor. 150 HP, 150 HP, or 90 HP. Right click from EGA is going to be enough. Concussive Shot is there, but honestly, there's nothing to follow it up. So two kills go in favor. The miss first blood as well as the kill in the middle lane. So the support's getting more done for the side of the Radiant, for sure, so far. Yeah, absolutely. They just made a good rotation. You know, they got they got the kill in the top lane. Invoker kind of overstepped, got them first blood, and then they just made the rotation right to mid. So, wow. I mean, it was it was a pretty easy kill on Fly. the middle lane. I actually thought there was potential that they were going to miss it, but do you think Fly and Omega can get this kill here? Uh, in the lane, or like, what are they doing here? What, what like, yeah. I guess stacking is the Sand King, but why is the Skywrath Mage over here? Like, what is their next play? I guess is what I'm trying I, to ask you. Like, what would I be mean? They were they're making the rotation right, and now they're probably thinking about the two-minute rune, but they're going to be too late for it. But they know that. I am. I'm, I'm unsure. I mean, of course they have a ward right here. In fact. Life pack. Sir. In fact. Oh, that's a sentry ward. I was like, oh god, there's a sentry ward. Or there's two wards placed by the Radiant in the same area. Oh god, Niz, why didn't we go, like, ape shit over this? But, uh, no, no, no. It's it's a sentry ward and OBS on the high ground, and then the Radiant ward is actually right here. The dire ward, the Radiant uh, sentry does see this, but I guess they never attempted the D ward. Or maybe they did, and he literally missed every single one. Hmm. <laughs> Literally. I mean, that's happened before. We've all had those moments in our lives where you miss and 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 then oh god mid comes in gang soon. You're like, well guys, I'm sorry. All I wanted to do was help you out by removing vision, but what really happened is I fed a kill <laughs> to the enemy team and you guys are like support please. They just need to get rid of the ability to miss on wards. I feel like 
feel like that's something that needs to happen. Yeah. How many times have you died because you got just you just wanted to get that last auto attack off because you kept missing on the damn ward? Or you just missed forever and you died because you couldn't actually de ever get any damage to it? Uh, yeah, uh, I would. Uh, I, I would. I would. I would vote for that. I mean, like, I would vote for chocolate covered bacon too, Niz. I mean, like, this it's is too this much. is this it's is rhetorical. Much. This is a rhetorical question. Like, of course, I would want to remove the mischance. Is that a good idea? No, but I would love it. I would love it. And uh, I think we are, of course, experiencing some lags. So we'll keep it somewhat entertaining for you guys. As I say somewhat, because we don't have cool studio productions. But uh, graphs are not showing too much, as they really shouldn't this early on in the game. But there is a tendency towards the side of the Radiant. And uh, if that tendency continues, it could snowball a little bit into the mid-game. We could be looking at a Radiant side controlling the mid-game for a, a decent portion, but... That remains to be seen. That definitely remains to be seen. In a big way. And, uh, oh, and I think uh, before you speak, Niz, the other thing that's worth noting, the rest of the graphs have progressed. Of course, if you guys aren't following, I'll go ahead and link that in, a, in two minutes when this uh, is set on the stream. But we have uh, Agarino's Nerve Retriever still playing, but No Soap China was able to beat out Grey Maggots. They're now in the semifinals. The winner of this will go on to play the winner of uh, Putitos and uh, Opponent, whoever that ends up being in the other semi-final. But it looks like, guys, the rest of this tournament will be wrapping up in the next hour and a half to two and a half hours as we are getting towards the end portion and it's starting to get real exciting. And also, yeah. to be fair, this is a pretty good glimpse on the teams that are going to be looking strong on Thursday. Of course, there's more teams on or Sunday. There's more teams to sign up on Sunday that don't because, you know, if you've won it before or consistently top four, there's really not as much reason to sign up for Thursday, right? You've already gotten some clout. You just kind of want to play for the big prize, the big, you know, some money, etc. But um, this is a pretty good glimpse as to who's looking strong going into. Well, a lot of the the better teams and the the better players, and I say that with the quotations, but um, kind better of just quotes. sometimes just use use this to just kind of throw together a team with some friends and have some fun and there's a couple other leagues that the players do that but uh, we are finally going to get an unpause apparently the packet loss has gone away no not for me it's still 60 percent but apparently we're going anyways well the observer's good so we're set i can see we're good no lag and that just means niz ha 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 copper <laughs> hd as the D-Ward is going to happen in the middle lane, Radiant does get their ward D-Warded before they're able to D-Ward the Dire Ward, which... Actually, you want to know what? I'm, I'm really stupid. If you look at the timer on these wards, the Dire Ward was placed post-Radiant Sentry Ward. So, especially post-Vision. So they have no idea this ward is actually here. Even though there's a Sentry there, they don't know. Yeah, uh, good point. I wish I'd been paying attention for when that was placed. But Ryu Noob's now in offlane Medusa as the two supports on the Radiant side have rotated into this bottom lane with their Tidehunter Tykin. They look to try to kill Mercy. As he's standing up by the tower, not really too much of a chance that EGA. And of course Cat going back and forth in that middle lane. Another D ward. Uh, that was a uh, Mercy please is on VB, which means that was Dire Side Ward. So we have one to one D wards. Both sides have one ward up, but however, Dire side is the only w side with a r rune ward, which is worth noting. Oh, and actually, in middle lane, I, m I completely missed that. Sorry, the HP completely thrown off by the pause, guys. Sorry, I will get back into the zone of things. I apologize, but yeah, EGA does clean up in the middle lane, and that's an important kill. Meanwhile, Ryan Noob is actually in big trouble. Cold snap, concussive shot, stun, bolts, the sun strike, the right clicks. He's dropping down to 80 HP. And that mana shield helping out a ton, but Skywrath Mage with that last arcane bolt able to clean up that kill. And so they will be ahead in the scoreboard, but bigger deal, honestly, I think, is EGA getting that kill in the middle lane. Yeah, but that's that's kind of the downside when you're kind of leaving your deuce up there and your supports have shown down here, because, of course, they were counter-warding. Um, so they were completely visible on the map. And I actually like that uh, Tykan actually passed the sentry ward to, I think it was Corey, 
who uh, then placed it, of course. The supports know where to place the sentry wards to cover all the spots. Sometimes the core players yep. don't, as well, Mercy Plea is in trouble. Yeah, he is. Then the stun bouncing back and forth. Gush been used, but now there's, of course, the fire blast. Right clicks are there. Stomp stunning wow. up. Maybe he survives here. One right click is all that's needed from Witch Doctor, and that'll be it. He doesn't have a stout shield, so there's really no risk. But he lives there. The Sun Strike. Actually, well, you know, I would be excited about that Sun Strike, and it was on Mark, but the tower got the kill. Top, top, and why top. would I be excited about anything besides top? As, of course, Bayan, low health, Ryu Noob, was low health, does salve up, now going on to fly. I don't think he can get the kill on fly, but nonetheless, he's still alive, and... Was that a three-man gank he just survived? I don't know, I guess. I just, wow. Well, well played by Ryan Noob. Able to survive was, a large concentration of heroes. I was too busy bouncing around and missing the kill on mid. Yeah, I know. Oh, there was another another kill in middle? Ember yeah, Spirit returned TA kills died. on EGA. And... Yeah. All right, guys. There's too much action. Eight kills in the first five minutes. I apologize. My camera work is worse than my casting. And I apologize. It's hard. I quit. I need Funka. This is something you typically don't see. Five and a half minutes into the game, three people at the Dire Fountain. Not because they died, but because they ran back. Yeah, lots of conflict. And it's also something that we haven't talked too much about. We have a buy-in farming on the Invoker in the top lane, which is really interesting. He was playing support last game, and now he's playing a core, so they feel comfortable in many different positions. Yeah, in the team, which allows them to have some versatility. But Bartlett, Corey, setting up top lane, potentially looking for a kill. This is their ward, so there's no knowledge of the Dire, to my knowledge, oh, no. that they're here. And yeah, Bayan running off into the trees. He's not going to be able to get out of here because he already used his TP to come out into lane. He's going to throw down the Sun Strikes, try to deal Sun damage, but he gets stunned up, and in the corner he's down three. Spirit's coming out, going to go on Bartlett, does get this chains to cancel that TP, so a one for one. Mercy, please, trying to catch out, make it a two for two, or a two for one, sorry, but Stomp only hits on creeps. And he's going to go ahead and walk away with Tail behind his legs. This is really not much he can do about it. Meanwhile, middle lane, it looks like it's just a slight exchange, not a big one. I'm not missing a kill this time. It's just some Darude. Do, 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 do. Yeah. That wasn't even close to the melody, but... That was... Riot, Raptors, Riot. Yikes. This is like, I can't recover that, Raptors. Uh, the only thing fitting is this awkward silence on the back of that. <laughs> just leave me out to dry. That's fine. I, it has to happen sometimes. And just let it die in some way. Like, no, no, no I'll return the favor, news, and I got your back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so this game state, even on the scoreboard, definitely not on the EXP and gold graph. How do you feel? What's what's your stamp? What's the what's the, what's the Niz Niz's analysis of the game state right now? I'm pro radiant. You're pro radiant. Why are you pro radiant? Because they have Medusa. Medusa's okay. a weird Well, piece. EGA gonna die, making the radiant side a lot what? harder to win. Is it is cleaned up by Cat the TP Ooh. Ravage trying uh, to get some return kills off of this, but I don't think they're going to. Cat low on mana. There is the trap as well. Help slowing this up. Tide is still going ham. He has access to Arcane Boots, but he doesn't have the HP to continue to dive. And of course, with that, it's Flame Shield. Flame Guard, sorry. It's damn near impossible to really focus down on Ember Spirit. And he gets a lot out of that solo. 834 experience, 440, 70 gold. 4470. That would be insane if you got that much gold from that. 447 gold total. Of course, Ender War Runner is farming bottom during this. It won't ever show up on any graph, but the fact that Ravage was used there and nothing happened on the back of it is also big. To know. It did show up. It shows up in well, the post fight up. report in is. And our in our handy tool that doesn't really Radiant turn out to be that handy. Mercy, please. Might be at the mercy of Shh Shh. Niz, stop stop making me I was trying to sound smart. Get stunned up. Is the Tide Hunter. Stomp gonna allow Centaur to go ahead and run away and as I'm sounding stupid, Centaur action is occurring. Huh? Oh. Mercy please almost as oh, blink. Bartlett. Oh, Bartlett. But that invis buy in with the ghost walk. The QQ dub going the early point in the wax. I personally prefer to see this out of invoker players. It's the safe route, which is why people tend not to go it. But it is going to guarantee that he survives there. And yeah, he is really, really, really close. And as you're right, it's only nine minutes in. He did get the tranquils, but he is close. They Six need it. If they oh, want to be gold, able to... Or middle lane, middle gold, middle lane, EGA in trouble. Well, dead. As he's going to fall to the ground, Cat was able to chase that out with the Remnant, secure that kill. And now in the top lane, Bayan, 
The heat's going on to him, but again, ghost walk. And he's going to be able to casually walk away. Kill averted. Life saved. Bottom lane, no. Just a casual chase in the lane. Nothing exciting. The excitement seems to have doled down for a little bit. Huh? It's a platinum baby Roshan. That's worth some money. Realize. That is worth some money. That's flies. It and does fly. You know, it'd be scary if Roshan could actually use his Radiant's wings. Middle tower is under attack. After the third kill. Oh God! And Rosh flies around the map, and you have to find him to kill him. Mercy. Then the bottom lane looks like a Fly TP'd in there with him. And let's see what happens here. Is Mercy and Fly have a lot of potential together here with the Stomp and the Mystic Flare? There it is, and they're just going to go ahead and clean up this kill as that last Arcane Bolt was enough to clean it up. And of course, if you guys don't know, Mystic Flare does zero damage to creeps, so have no fear in throwing it around creeps at all. Radiance bottom tower is under what? attack. Cat bounty room. I didn't know Top that. Top lane, though. <laughs> you didn't know that? I'm so bad. How did you? <laughs> Niz, go study Dota. How am I the fire the Niz? Fire Niz. Inside. Top lane. Oh. Yeah, I don't think. Oh no, it is. You know what? Bartlett learned. He buys dust, and the stun comes. Bayan's going to fall, but with a great oh TP from Cat, he's not going to die in vain. First goes down the Witch Doctor. Second might be Cory, as the phase boots are ending, but there's still half the duration onto this Flame Guard. But now, there's a Ravage, and it's going to hit. Cat taking a lot of damage. Anchor Smash. Flame Guard over. He's going to drop low. Oh, Mystic Snake chasing Snake. him down, and that's going to be the kill. Ryanu with the double. Count him, as he's going to pocket the gold and buy up some drums really here or, or really soon mercy still farming in the bottom lane though does have access to that blink dagger ega farming in the middle lane almost at his own drums and they might actually just get this top tower off the back of it i don't think Bayan can really stop these two heroes he's gonna try anchor smash doing quite a bit of damage to him ryu noob and tyken will go ahead and back off after of this off of this but they do get a ton of damage done to this tower that of course there's no hero to heal it so it is permanent damage which means it's worth noting more so than when there's a tree on the on the table or a Omni Knight with an axe. Oh, ah, Omega Blink Dagger didn't mention. Channels up the epicenter. There's the meatball. It's gonna chase down the Medusa and she's gonna fall. Sand King does get that kill. Ryu New falls. 340 gold into his pocket. And a pretty big exchange in experience as they both split 970 experience between the two of them. That's big. Thank Omega you power. Do so, though. Hmm? That's a tanky do so though. Yeah, it is. But uh, do you, I mean, obviously, well, Tyken might be in trouble. Hold the thought, as uh, Corey. No, they do get away. But obviously, that's a good use of Epicenter because it gets a kill on a Medusa. Yeah. But do you think that was the best use of his of his first blink Epicenter? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you you, you think that's the best play on the table? Is they are going to be able to clean up the TA in the middle lane again? Dota Raptors, you're just missing kills all over the place. You I apologize, there. guys. It's just you killed TA or you killed Dusa. And, well, just managed to kill Dusa, and then, well, his team killed TA, so. Works out. They managed to kill both high value targets. So yeah. I, I, I see oh, no point. Bartlett's so dead. Bartlett's so dead. I don't see any way he lives. Yeah, but I don't see any point in holding. <laughs> that was so casual. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> holding out on using your blank dagger. It's 12, well, 11 minutes probably around then. Everyone in the game should be expecting Sand King to about have his blank dagger at that point. But still, there's that surprise moment where all of a sudden he does come blinking in. But, I don't know. The longer you wait, the less likely you're going to get a, a good initiate with it, in my opinion. Oh, so might as well just logic. clean up the kill when you come there. I agree, and it's a high value target. You're definitely right. Three heroes in the top lane. Tyken eating quite a bit of damage, but he's going to get the Ravage off. And yeah, buy-in. Omega taking quite a bit. Ranker Smash going to clean up the Sand King. They do lose the Tide Hunter, but they get two kills off of the back of it. Rather important kills, and they needed that. They've been losing a lot of heroes with really no answer back to back to back. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, though, Cat's continuing to farm. Got his own drums in this game. He's going to be farming up this creep wave, pushing this tower, and this is going to prevent the push coming out from... The Radiant side, as you can see, most of the heroes have evacuated out of the lane. Bartlett's out of the lane. Ogre Magi is going to get some experience middle lane. He's level 7, which is important for him to get. But uh, the towers, none have fallen. Is this? We're, we're shaping up to maybe see a very long game. 
Well, blink in the oh, top yeah, lane. Oh yeah, top lane and Ooh. oh Medusa and he That's caught a lot the of damage. Event. Yeah, I mean Burrow strikes what 300 damage, 280 plus an, uh, the the burst of Burrow strike on a Mystic Flare. I mean I caught the end of that and her health went from half to empty. And Centaur's combo. Oh yeah, 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 definitely the, the <laughs> double edge doing a crap ton of damage. damage. But uh, Radiant side, Mill Tower gonna be able to get the Dire side down to what 232, the mid T1. 206, right clicks are there, plus the catapult, and I think this is a pretty guaranteed death of the tower. No, never mind, Blink, Stomp, and the Sunstrike, Bartlett falls. Corey gets the last hit on the tower, though, so his life isn't necessarily in vain, but they lose two heroes to get one tower, and Bayan, taking opportunity out of that to go ahead and push top lane, it does get pushed back as soon as Ryan Noob's back up, and EGA, oh, no, Cat EGA. in the bottom lane, EGA is more than dead, as Cat's just gonna stand here and let EGA <laughs> die. These what two blink daggers so are just doing work. Do, do you realize we have 25 kills in 15 minutes? <laughs> do you realize how active this game is? Because I there's definitely been a lot happening. <laughs> we yeah, got what do you... a blink on tide and ravage up in 30 seconds, so we're gonna get another one soon. Like, so what's your take on the game state right now? Because there's a massive kill advantage to Void Boys, but I don't feel like they're really that far ahead. Radiant's where where they, they've got the, the the mid game 100% secured, they are winning right now. But they're definitely rolling with both these blink daggers running around, getting kills. The question is, can they keep this up? And what what role? What what impact is Ryan Noob on this Medusa gonna have on this game? And that's that's what it all comes down to. I I have no idea how valuable this Medusa is gonna be. So well, that's that's the thing that's gonna really decide the game. This is gonna be a big fight, and this is definitely gonna be a major decider in the mid game. We're gonna remember this fight for the rest Tyken's of the game. Tyken's waiting though. Mercy wants to go in. Actually, he really does want to go in. He's gonna blink stop. Oh, it's off the mark, and that's probably a big deal. As Tide is looking at a four-man ravage. Mega Pointer's gonna come in. Custom shot too. hits on him, cancels yeah, it. The there's the there's the there's the three spirit. Of course, Medusa throwing out her old. The Epicenter doing a lot, but the Ravage doing a lot as well. And now they're going to be able to stun up quite a bit. Two heroes down on the side of the uh, on the dire. Make that one on the sound. Uh, the Radiant finally falls two. So off the back of that is Invoker is able to get the kill on Ogre Magi. Now Mercy, please. Getting cleaned up. Now I get fight. I just, it was all over the place. But it definitely looks like the Radiant's going to get the better side out of it. As Bayan does get cleaned up off the very end of that fight. And is the Ravage was huge. That ep the huge. The Epicenter was nice. But man, I, I, I just... I guess I kind of got lost in the in the heat of the fight, but was that really that big of a? Uh, I mean, I mean, stats wise, yes, it's a big change to the side of the radiant, but like I, I, I guess, I guess the question I really want to ask is, how did that happen, right? Ravage. Ravage. Okay, just. But Ryan Noob's gonna fall in the top. Yeah, he is. He is gonna go ahead and die. But Ravage is a really good ability. Do do you think that? That blink stomp is really what screwed them, or do you think that they just didn't retreat after they they screwed up the blink stomp? Well, the blink stomp overcommitted the centaur, and then they went to fall back, and it was looking like they were clumping as three here, but then Omega Poner came in or Ponage came in and got like hit in there and got a good epi, and kind of blinked in, but really he was, I mean he was dealing damage, but it's still only rank one epi. Rank 1 Epi isn't the most damage, like, yeah, he almost killed Bartlett with it, but he still couldn't even manage to kill Bartlett. So, I mean, he was getting good damage, but then the Ravage came out, and then Bartlett got a good ult off. He did a bunch of damage. He ended up killing the Sand King and getting a bunch of damage on the Centaur. And then it's, it looked like it was almost dire favorite at that moment, and they started chasing the Radiant, and then it just quickly turned around. And the Radiant just started picking up kills, and, well... It was a pretty big swing. I think it was 1,500 gold, 2k gold, something like that. It was, it was definitely a big uh, swing. But uh, two smokes, opposite sides. They're going to reveal each other. The blink stomp does hit this time. Bartlett going to get immediately bursted down. No Witch Doctor Ward. And now by getting gone on by Tidehunter. But in the back of the fight, his team is in trouble because there's four dire heroes. EGA going to fall. And now Tidehunter is on the run. There is the stampede allowing Omega Poner to attempt the chase. But he's not going to be able to complete the chase. Corey. Doesn't have a blink dagger though, so he's in big trouble. Blink stomp gonna be able to secure this kill. Three heroes down on the side of the radiant, and that was one hell of a catch play. I didn't 
Oh, push so, bottom by Ryanu. But yeah, I don't know if yeah. you saw how they started that. That was super cool, the way they executed that. Kind they're of stock standard, but... They're nice. kind of running over them all over the place. And we saw this um, last Sunday. Oh, bottom lane, Ryanu might actually fall. There is the blink. Uh, uh, stun, epicenter, sun strike, dealing quite a bit of damage. Ryanu does get... Or does TP and cat. Oh, uh, no. Unfortunately, that Medusa ult is just so useful. Able to prevent the bully use. Yeah, we saw this last Sunday, and where basically a Terra Blade wasn't fighting. It was Baco for uh, uh, Valiant Armada. He was just basically off in another lane, just farming, 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 and never ever participating, and then he came into the game and won top lane. Oh, yeah. Um, Action. On to Tykan. Oh, no, he'll get away. But, um, but, yeah, so, you know, yes, Void Boys is running all over them, but Ryan Noob's been off by himself just farming and pushing other lanes so who knows until he really oh, Omega. starts being Might a be part right click does hit him blink is cancelled but they don't have the pursuit but yeah no I definitely agree with you do you think Medusa can have that big of an impact though considering the snowball that is occurring right now I mean she already has one ultimate orb 1800 gold right now imagine Ooh, close mercy please does get the TP out I mean is that a Lincoln's is that a Scotty actually don't know Manta. Yeah, it could be Manta. But uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, meets middle lane. No, Looks like me. Bartlett gonna get slide of fist up. The stun flies out onto Cat. He is gonna rim it away, so it hits him, but it doesn't bounce around. And now Bartlett, low HP, running forward. The stun, the double stomp as well. And now EGA gonna take quite a bit of damage. And the Ravage as well, hitting on a lot. They have a great Mystic Flare on EGA, focusing it up. And now the chase, maybe. Stampede, active. Now, done. They have the Flame Guard active running doing quite a bit of damage there's the medusa popping the stone gaze as they are going to all start to look the other direction and try to get away right noob using that to escape omega power doesn't want them to he did buy back eight seconds till epicenter he has blink in seven as well he's going to get four step forward get stunned and then melt strike dealing quite a bit of damage to him though he's going to be able to get the great stun as well as that uh sandstorm allowing his escape and now with that urn healing him up again he has epicenter back off of cooldown so they could continue this with the heroes that they have. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. So I missed most Bayan, of that fight. I was tending Bayan to the cast. just picked a Necro 3 up. Oh. Straight Necro 3. At least she still wants to cast. Well, that's okay. Cats casting is okay. Cats get viewers. We had more viewers when cats were meowing than we didn't. Is Obviously, they want the cats. So give the cats. But anyways, what I was going to say while you were uh, uh, dealing with your uh, El Caterino, the Invoker literally picked up a straight necro three so that's going to make a big difference in the rest of this game and that'll allow them to take their 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 like i talked about in a previous cast they're kind of like ethereal advantage the fact that they have like a golden experience advantage and allow them to turn that into a physical advantage towers map control and of, of course uh, other assets such as roche if not racks yeah but they got to keep the train moving yeah, no, no, definitely. And they are bottom. Invoker's farming, interestingly enough, with the acquisition of this Necro. I would have liked to see him go bottom with it after he healed up, but he's just going to go ahead and pop it and send it off to D Ward, it looks like, or farm the jungle while he farms. And he's looking to get huge. Interesting use of it. Not the most preferred, but it can be useful. Cat, bottom lane, though. Big trouble. He does have a remnant down, so he's long gone. No chance of catching him. God, I hate that hero. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> I almost feel like when he jumps back to his remnant, slow should be effective in that, not just the speed that he throws his remnant. But I guess, I don't know. How would you scale that? But whatever. It's not that important. As we've got a team fight to Bruin. Yes, they are the all lane. congregated into the bottom Potentially. Lane. They're, they're baiting. Yeah, well, I don't actually know if they're going to do this. I don't know what they're beating. <laughs> Just the creeps now. I think they saw the rotation into the. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are going to continue though. They do have three heroes down here, but the radiant does have decent amount of force in the area. Forces in the area. They are going to even rotate the farthest hero away back into that lane. And, but no, four heroes now here for the dire. So. 
A large congregation of them. The only one who isn't here is Bayan. He's farming in the jungle. Blink forward. Stop. Ravage, though, reinitiates this. Mercy going to be the first one to die. Is that Death Ward? Is absolutely wrecking house. And now the chase is on. Fly going to fall. Maybe not. TP's wow. away at 82 HP. Cat going to throw Remnant out. Able to use it. Does try to bottle up. It gets stunned, so it's going to cancel the charge. He's going to fall, as he's not going to get nearly enough mana to continue. And... That's exactly what you were talking about in the whole, um, what was I going to say? The, if they don't get the train or continue, this is going to happen, and then they're going to lose the game in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Well, Dusa was there too, right? Like, yeah. I, I honestly think Stone Gaze is an incredible skill, and you can almost fight with it like it's a Chrono or like it's a Ravage kind of deal. Sunstrike like it's that good. out. So they are aware. And they are actually the Blink Happy Center hits oh, on three. Go. It's going to cancel the ages. Three of them down to 50 HP. Very low. Omega Power will fall in the end, but it does claim two of them with him. One of them being the Aegis, actually. And no, wow. Aegis is still on TA. Oh. UGA still has Aegis. I swear I thought I saw Just Aegis, barely low. Just barely low. Okay, so that was just the Roche animation yeah. messing with my eyes. But wow, what a great epicenter. That was still worth it. Definitely still worth it. Able to clean up two heroes. Can his team get more off the back of this? Of course, they have Mercy and Fly in the area, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do anything with that right now. They're going to have to back off, and they're going to go ahead and group up with Bayan, who is really the hero they need to group up with because Bayan's all of their damage. Like, he's, he's kind of, and all their push. He's kind of been off on his own, doing his own thing quite a bit this game. I think it's starting to hurt them a little bit. Like, it was very useful before, but as soon as he got that Necro 3 at 21 minutes, I think he should have been with them, personally. Yeah. I mean, that's an early Necro 3, and, and that can hurt. Like, you can't really fight into a Necro 3. That Necro 3 actually does quite a bit of work against the Deuce as well. Well, and also, don't, don't forget the movement speed that everyone gets, the attack speed that everyone gets, and then if you happen to kill it with spill damage, you might die. But, advantage or initiation going from the dire side, they do go ahead and chain up EGA, but EGA not really that scared, is just going to go ahead and run off into the front, is actually running very far in the front, probably going to get stunned up, does, there's the sun strike, it's actually going to use the Aegis, so Aegis is wasted, not really going to be much more used to it, the Necro might get wasted as well, but there's a good searing chain as well as cast, and now they're going to pop. That Necro book is on to Ryan Noob, so he has quite a bit of HP. There's the double stun, triple cast, multicast, death. As we do see the Ember Spear fall now, Bayan gonna pop. That Ghost Walk trying to get away. The entire dire side is trying smoke to escape chase. and get away. And yeah, they are gonna smoke to chase, which means they might be able to catch out maybe one, maybe two, but the two in the back have blink daggers. I really don't think there's any really little snake. Oh wow, he summoned his and Ford Spirits and TP'd out, didn't he? Yep. Yep. It's going to completely prevent that push now. Completely prevent that push. And yep. yeah. So, again though, I, I have to lean towards what you said earlier, Niz. I don't feel like they're getting the ball, or I don't feel like they're keeping the ball rolling fast enough or hard enough. And and the, the, the numbers agree with me. I don't know if you agree with me as well. No, I, I agree. I think I think right now the map is definitely tilted in Locksup's favor. Not necessarily because the creeps are all pushing in that way, but I think the net worth is all coming their way. So, yeah, uh, I think I they're agree with that. they're in a real good spot, and this this um not Naga, this Medusa is really paying off now. But well, uh, we've got a smoke from Void Boys, and Did it's already been drawn out. They have Ember Spirit in the far back, but you know the first three heroes have a lot of stun duration available to them. Of course, Sand King and Centaur equipped together with a total of oh god, what is it? Five seconds, five and five, little over five seconds. But we'll see what well, happens get, here in the middle. If lane. they get picked here, oh Mercy Bart gets revealed, so and unfortunately bad. they know this Bartlett now on the chase with Corey. Don't know why they're chasing it, but they are. Ogre Magi, two heads, one brain. They don't know. They didn't see him. Yeah, they don't know. Oh, they didn't see him. So only... No. Okay, so they're just completely oblivious. They, didn't see this, him. But they are running into a trap as, of course, Mercy. Going to be able to get that stomp, that double edge, the death. And now the remnant out and around from Cat is going to avoid Ogre Magi as Ryan Noob comes around the back. But they do pick off Bartlett for free. The free so pick silly. is always nice. 
Bartlett even drew out that that's what was happening, and then he ended up picking up Top Rune and walking into it. It was silly. Unless he was drawing for them to go there. I don't know. Maybe he just likes drawing on the map, because I have no idea what he's doing right now. What is that? <laughs> no idea, but we do have an epicenter bottom, right? Oh no, Ryan Noob in minute. trouble, and he's the one man that they need to keep alive. Will they be able to get him out of here? I don't think so. They have no one in the area, but his ult is allowing him to get away pretty quick. Phase boots, drums, but not enough is going to go ahead and fall. And yeah, he has an insane net worth, but so does Invoker. Honestly, Invoker is getting up there really quick. In fact, you know, with that bot, with that Necro 3, his push and split push potential is very strong. Of course, you can already see that top lane is completely pushed in from him, quickly rotated into this bottom lane, and now they're going to be threatening this bottom T2. Well, that's what they needed. Now, they should be able to get a tower on the back of this with Ryan Noob down, and this is a very hard tower for Radiant to defend. Yeah, no, it really is. But they're postured for it, so... Yeah, it looks like they did. And ideally, they should just be mid here. I mean, they have Ravage, um, but, you know, in middle lane, there is the, the Skyrath Mage, that is. You no, know, that's the Ember Spirit. They're nearby to defend. He picks up his Battle Fury, and there's the Trap Slow. But Omega Poner, whatever. They get the tower. Invoker gets the last hit, even. And they could have done, like, half oh God, damage he has to a full the tower. If he wants to go it. I think he's going to go BKB, because it's the more safe decision, the more intelligent decision in that respect. But uh, he has enough for an Ags, but he'll have enough for BKB and 200 gold now. This is uh, a very interesting game, Niz. Yes, it is. It's it's definitely shaping up to be it's an more interesting back one. back and forth than I expected it to be. I... Like, not to say one team is better yeah. than the other, but the drafts, the way they work is one team should snowball against the other. But yes, however, I don't think zero on the net worth is is really even as this game progresses. I think if the net worth is zero and even on the graph, I think that's locked up favored. I think that's radiant favored. So, so you really don't think Ember Spirit can out carry Medusa in this situation? I don't honestly I don't know enough about that about that kind of matchup between the two. I, I I my instincts tell me that Dusa is just gonna walk all over this game. Well, and I would say go with your instincts, so I I don't know though, like I I wanna be proven wrong. Last Sunday, you know, I was talking about Legion Commander. And how I wanted to be proven wrong, and I wanted someone to show me the way. Show me that Legion Commander is a top tier pick. Who heard my cries? He dominated in the semifinals with it. So. Yeah, I caught bits knows? and parts of that game as I was studying for my class. But yeah, that was, oh a, my God, it was crazy. a very good performance out of him. But we'll see if Ryan Noob can bring this game to victory Ooh. for his team. Big pickups. Necros. Yeah, Necro Necro two. On the center. Yeah, two of them. Well, level two. And a refresher picked up on side enter, so we've reached that point and is the big double ravage. The five seconds of, of AoE stun is gonna be big. Is Cold Snap slowing up Tide Hunter a little bit, but Poker really doesn't care. He has a BKB, he can BKB TP away, and there is zero BKB disable coming out of the side of uh Dardent. Of course they have Medusa Stone Gaze, Dota Raptors, you're stupid, you forgot about that, but no, I didn't. Because you only get stunned by that if you want to. So of course BKB cannot, you cannot prevent I, a TP with that. I don't like this. I don't like what Omega Poner keeps trying to do with like baiting creeps and trying to be snaky. I don't think he's really accomplishing anything. I mean, if he creep skips here, he gets farm, but he hasn't. But he's not going to do that, right? Like, I don't he know. He should. Well, I'd like to see him hit 16 because his epicenter, even if he does catch one hero, and uses epicenter for it, like, I think they need that down. for a push, right? I, I don't know, I'd rather just see him do other stuff, be close to the creep wave, so at least he's earning experience, 
Maybe that's what they want. They actually want to split, or not split the experience and just let Fly get it all, but I'd like to see 16 on the Saiyan King. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, the 80 second cooldown, the extra two pulses is a big deal. The, I mean, Epicenter is oh, really that's important. Cooldown. I'm really stupid. Really, really important. Oh, no, for it, their is, it is 100 fight, seconds so. still, though. Yeah, no, it's still, it goes down 20 seconds still. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a big deal, but... Uh, Whoa! So we do see the calls going out, the shots fired, the shoutouts. What the hell is even? No clue. This bottom lane, they're actually on dire side. They, you know, they have been able to congregate a ton of heroes here, and they're gonna force a ton of TPs. They are just gonna go ahead and immediately back out, and I don't know though. They are gonna lose Cat in the middle lane potentially. He has a remnant down, and he's able to get it off. As of course you see these projectiles following him, but bam, ba bam, but not gonna do too much to him. So Mega Poner left his woods and uh, he's right back in there again. Man, he he's like a brood mother. Like I swear, that's where I would hide his brood mother, like nine games out of ten, if I was dire. Like, I'd just chill there, cut the creep wave, etc. But no, 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 I don't know what his plan is. You know, and Bayan loves the split push as an invoker. And again, I I, I, I don't want to come off as like, you know, oh, I'm better than this player that he doesn't understand. No, 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 it's just, I think personally that Bayan is just not doing enough on the invoker right now. Like, he's 6, 5, and 7, yes, but like you said, Niz, they need to win this game sooner than later, and split pushing isn't helping them win right now. I'm a fan of split pushing, but they don't have the lineup to win with split pushing. Last Sunday we saw Kai do this as well in the Invoker, doing a lot of like splitting and, and a lot of uh, farming and his net worth was unreal, but uh, they did actually lose that game as well. Nope. Nope, middle tower taking a ton of damage. They will get the bottom T2, before, or top T2 before that happens in the epicenter. Gonna hit on two, but the Ravage hitting on the rest and the Death Ward immediately thrown out, gonna drop down the Centaur down to low health, Cat low as well as the Sand King has already fallen, they will lose the Ember Spirit off the back of it. Bayan comes to the fight, but Bayan comes to nothing but dead teammates, his Necrobook falling as well. 400 gold going in their favor, and actually TA, in the meantime, going to be able to clean up the Skyrath Mage off by herself towards that bottom T2 of the dire side. And Shockwave off the mark, going to allow Ryu Noob to get up on this high ground, and it's going to force out, force out fortification. There's no T1s on the map, which means it will be on cooldown for a total of 6 minutes. So we won't be seeing another one until 32.50. And Niz, that was great execution out of the Radiant. Yep. Radiant. It's got this. Ryan Noob's too big. This Dusa is going to win the game. <laughs> it <is Tradamus>. <laughs> <laughs> I. How is How do you... I don't see Ember Spirit winning the game. I don't, I don't see it. He's got to, like, crit and hit it, kill everyone. Well, they keep getting chased down. Like, Ember Spirit's never able to stand his ground behind a front line and throw out Sleight of Fist. Do you know what I mean? Or he's never able to, to get in in the midst of chaos. Like, it, it just seems like he's always on the run. And whenever Ember Spirit's on the run, he's doing nothing. I mean, every hero does nothing, no doubt. But Ember Spirit on the run can't use Remnants offensively. He can't Flame Guard offensively. He can't do what he needs to do. He just runs. He hmm. just runs. Smoke Ink, though, they want to turn this around. I think this is a really smart decision. Because they really do need anything. something here. But Well, maybe they could, as they are near a lot of heroes here. Mercy going to oh, get no. revealed, and he's actually going to find Ryanu. But Ryanu with a really Scotty. the worst person that could yeah, run into. Yeah, he's got... How, oh, God, I don't even want to do the math on his EHP. But, um, it's a lot. Yeah, it's Medusa. A lot. Right now, Medusa has more HP, or EHP, to magic and physical damage than the entire Dire team combined, I'm pretty sure, in HP. I'm just pretty sure of that. I'm kind of curi curious what it is, but I know if I do the math and I get it wrong, it's going to be recorded and no one's going to call me on it. I mean, 60% damage absorbed in exchange for 2.5 As man, that's 2.5, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's 
I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, the, then resistances, right? And of course, you have to factor in she has 20 armor, right? And that's that's innate armor, not plus armor. So, wow. I don't think did that you I see did. that? No, I did not. So, uh, Bjorn sent in his necro books. Or actually, the centaurs' uh, necro books walked in, and then he uh, he sunstrikes, so they had vision to destroy the horde. Well, high level play, oh. but is it high level enough as their middle tower is under siege by this insane EHP this? Medusa? Oh, only down 400 HP run. after multiple abilities. The ravage, though, really off the mark, only hitting a BKB target. But honestly, ah, uh, they got the kill on the only one they needed, anyways, though. Niz put it well, and. We're going to see oh, the end of this game, epi. guys, as they're going to siege into this base. There's a great epicenter and a two-man stun, and maybe actually not, as the Invoker has a great follow-up off of that, but there's the Death Ward, and there is the Stone Gaze, and they're losing racks while they're losing heroes. And this is not a good situation. EGA, with a bad start, is standing strong in the front lines, holding for his team. Corey in the background getting on, oh, gone on by Mercy, but where is Ryunub? He's not even participating, and now he's going to come back. EGA is in that meld form. But she's gonna die to the stone wall, or he's gonna die to the stone, or the ice wall. It <laughs> dies wow. to the ice wall. But uh, they still get racks, and that's all that matters. And that's gonna mean GG in the next five minutes or less, because you, okay, you don't beat a Medusa by getting mega creeps against her necessarily, but you sure as hell lose really quickly when you're down racks against a Medusa, because it is so hard to go high ground because Medusa is one of the few carries, and I don't know if you agree or disagree with this, but one of the few carries, if not the only one, that can actually be a front runner without threat of dying. Like, especially yeah. at this farm level. And she has, oh yeah, she has Aegis, so, uh, for another, like, minute or two, I believe. <laughs> unkillable. Yeah. Literally unkillable, and Mercy, please, trying to go for Bartlett, we'll get the kill. But they needed to use the Burrow Strike, and now the chase is on to Omega Poner, as well as Mercy Please. There's the snake. There bounces between two. It looks like Invoker's going to come nearby, get a pretty good tornado onto the Titan, onto Ryanu. But they're just going to zone him back. They don't really care if they win this fight and push it back to the other side of the map. They probably win this game. Ravage, 40 second cooldown. Refresher, 70 seconds. Of course, Necrobook, 20 second for the Centaur, 60 for the Invoker. As he used it in the middle lane, and he's not really microing up his extra creeps so unfortunately they're not getting the use out of them now he resummons Ryan noob again front lines what are you supposed to do you just run you can't fight this you just run that restraint was so good in the bottom they could have easily chased and gotten uh, one or two kills but there was the chance that they would have just they could have lost um, some heroes there and if they did they would have lost their bottom racks so that was just good restraint to say you know what we're not just gonna we're not going to push just to get a couple kills on a centaur and a sand king. Like, what's the value in that? Killing them on our side of the map? No, I completely Risking agree. yourselves. Uh... And in case you didn't know this, Niz, or anyone else in the chat, of course, with Manta and or Illusions and Medusa. Oh, in the bottom lane, there's more action. Tide Hunter gets picked off, so that is a good pick. But of course, Tide is just going to respawn, and they should be fine in this game. It's they're, it's going to take a lot more for VB to be able to be back in the advantage or back in the driver's seat in this game. But what I wanted to say is when you activate illusions with Medusa, if you have split shot active, the illusions also get split shot. So a Manta illusions from Medusa actually push a lot faster than a lot of other heroes with Manta. Hmm. Bottom lane though. The pressure is about to be real. Look at that double necro book running in. One down, two down, three down. Ryanub gives literally zero about this. And bye bye creep wave. Bye bye push. Like, yeah, this EMP re removes a lot of her EHP, but remember, she has a Lincoln Sphere. She's regaining 13 a second. Unreal. She just goes back to the fountain, right? And he was like, fuck this. I just, I need mana, bro. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. The creep wave's here. Um, you guys should stand behind me in case they go on me. No, EGA actually going to be on the front lines. No, they're just going to go right noob, though, is the initiate, the one they're going to initiate on, and the blink. Burrow Strike, Epicenter hitting on two heroes. EGA pops the BKB, and there goes the Stone Gaze. Bayan taking a ton of damage, and now Skyrath Mage going to fall as well. Omega Power runs off with his teammate, Rakat. Bayan using that Ghost Walk, but he does get dusted up, and Witch Doctor able to secure that kill. Two heroes down for the side of Void Boys, and Niz, I think it's pretty safe to say that this game is all locked up. 
for the radiant side. Har 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 har. I'm going to pretend I didn't just hear that. <laughs> no, yeah, I think it's... I mean, I've been saying this for a while. I think now it's it's just kind of hammering it home. It's it's They can't kill Dusa. They can't. They can deal a ton of damage to everyone else. And they can kill everyone else, but they can't deal Dusa. And Dusa's just standing there killing everyone, so... Mm -hmm. Saving Grace was the Umber Spirit. And he hasn't had any item progression in the past 15 minutes or so. He does have 2300 gold, but he's got a plate mail. What is he gonna... That's an AC, I'm guessing? I mean, he's had it before the Chris. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's casual to deal with the TA, but like... Why? He's just building Daedalus? But yeah, I mean, maybe, but again, if that is the case, why? Like... It's not like that 10 armor is really going to help. Meld's at minus 8. Yeah, it basically negates Meld, but I don't really feel like in this situation you want to spend gold to negate one hero's ability, if you know what I mean. Like, I feel like that 1400 gold could equal a Daedalus now or equal a BKB now, which could have been allowing him to have a lot higher mobility in these fights and not having to worry about things like Ravage, things like Cask, things like Fire Blast. Yeah, I, I don't know. Unfortunately, Bartlett did DC, and prior to this game, we were having some. He was having some router issues. So hopefully, this isn't too long. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree. I hope it isn't a a very long pause, but I don't think it should be as Bart. Oh no, it is. Oh god, it's Bartlett. Oh god. Okay, it could be a very long pause, guys not entirely sure Bartlett was having router issues earlier that was part of the delay as it was Dodoraptor's fault Dodoraptor's is always at fault but um hopefully he'll be back soon and his router will stabilize but until then what's the Radiant's biggest way back into this game uh, picks or do you think they have to just outplay in a team fight do you think they still have the option to outplay in a team fight to win this game well, you said Radiant there. Obviously, you meant Dire because oh, Radiant God. is definitely yes. in the driver's seat here. Um, yes. No, no, no. How does the tight team that's going to win win? No. How does the team that might lose win? Honestly, I don't know. You can't kill Dusa. You kill Dusa, she still has buyback. Like, what? <laughs> How do you... You have to basically catch her somewhere where she's not like on the map or she's across the map or something and kill her team, her entire team. It's... No one on the Radiant side besides Deuce actually has buyback. That's very surprising. But... I don't know. I. You, you have to wipe Deuce's team. Which That's, means killing her. Well, without killing her, because you can't you can't wipe the right, team right. with her there. But then you have to kill her with whatever you have left. Yeah, I don't know. And so she's got five. You, I, I don't. You can get through the team, You're but screwed. can you You're get through screwed. the Medusa? I think, I think this is crazy. If you actually look at the net worth graph. To me, this game is not that at all. No, no, I don't. Like see that's it what either. I love about Dota. Like, sometimes the net worth doesn't mean anything in relation to how the game is going. No, I, I couldn't have said that better. I mean, there is definitely quantitative and qualitative differences in Dota, and both of them can give you completely different perspectives of the game. And sometimes one is right, one is wrong. And in this case, I definitely have to say the numbers are, are wrong. They're right. Well, the numbers are right. But they're wrong. It's just they have different weights. Yeah. There you go. Weights. There we go. That's a better way to say it. Well, five heroes in the bottom lane for the Radiant. They're looking to close out this game. This is, we're probably going to move it into the semifinals. And um, it looks like Locked Up is going to be moving with us, Niz. Sunstrike going into Roche, but Roche isn't up yet, nor will it even be up for a little bit longer. This tower, definitely doomed as there's a desolator whacking away at it 
They don't have an AC up to my knowledge, but they don't really need one. But here we go. Here we go. The fight's about to break out. Ryu Noob in the bottom lane, ready to set up for this. Wants to go. They do pop the Lincoln Sphere with that mana burn, but Necro 1 or Necro 3, the first one is down. There's the EMP. Only hits on EGA, really. He still has BKB and more than enough mana for his abilities to stun onto EGA as well as the sheep. But what are they trying to do with this? There's the Mystic Flare. But again, what are they trying to do with this? They need to hard engage. They need to hard engage. The longer they stand here and do nothing, they're going to lose their tower, they're going to lose their racks, and there's going to be nothing about it. There's the Searing Chains, but the BKB is popped, and they're just afraid to engage. And I, I don't blame them, because if they engage, they lose the game, but they have to if they want to try to win, and there goes the Searing Chains. Slow on to Tidehunter and the Silence to stop up his initiation, but they haven't done anything. They finally initiate onto EGA, who gets four staff slightly, not out of the base. They stun on Mercy, who gets four staff away, and now there's a decent tornado, but... The Radiant side just walks oh, away by taking turn. a free Rax. Oh man, that's so frustrating. That is so frustrating, right? Because the entire time, you know your team's sitting there like, Guys, we gotta stop this. But, you know, you have the other people saying, Well, if we fight this, we lose the game. But, I mean, ha you don't want to be that guy that says, Guys, we lose this game no matter what. You know, you don't. You never want to be that guy and that's fine. Because, you know, it's always good to keep an upbeat attitude and always try to win. But... In this situation, it's it's looking grim, Niz. Hmm. Well, they what they need to do is they need to smoke. They need to smoke and have a mega poner in smoke so that they don't know where his positioning is. Because he he was he wanted to go in, he wanted to go in, he was trying to find a positioning, and then then he rotated to the racks and started sandstorming, and then he had to blink back. Which meant he wasn't get, wasn't going to be able to engage until his blink was back up, and then the stampede came out and just there was nothing. I'm surprised they just gave him Roche, but they were fine with going top. They don't really need it. Why why do you need Roche when your Medusa has 3k HP, plus her EHP calculations and seven gold in the bank in the back foot? She does have a free slot though. I mean, no, she doesn't. She has a mm. TP, Niz. Um, blink for it by Mercy as we're going to leave that into an awkward moment. EGA is going to get burst and this is the fight they needed, but no! Says Tidehunter! Round two, no. And Bartlett may DC, but I don't think they're going to win this fight. Of course, the pause comes out because they don't really, they, they kind of need the Witch Doctor to win this fight. Maybe. Actually, no. No, they don't. They have Medusa. They win. Um, Medusa still has well over... God. She's only lost 300 health in his. <laughs> Through all of that, as the focus target, she's lost 300 HP. That's rounding down. Yeah, that's rounding down. Or up, I guess. However you want to look at it. Anyways, she just doesn't take damage. Nope. She's like, still a hero. All. None. Zip, zilch. And uh, game's going to resume here any moment as we do see the go from Fly. I assume we'll see the go from the Radiant any time now because, to be completely fair, Witch Doctor is not going to die. He's going to have plenty of time to walk over and use his spell because, well, Ryu Noob isn't going anywhere. First hero down for the Dire is going to buy back. Of course, there's the Aegis popping. That will be the Ember Spirit as he respawns. Dire is going to try to force this out. But uh, I'm surprised they're not just turning around with Ryu Noob in front. I guess it's because they're really scared. With the low fly. health on the tide hunter, but uh, yeah, looks like they're just gonna back out of here. Interesting decision. Medusa just goes to bottom lane to split push, of course, of course. And now she should make some manta illusions if she has it. Meanwhile, there's a, is a chase actually buying gonna catch up Bartlett, and this could be a big deal. Does get the slow on him. Summons up at those necro books. There's the cast bouncing. It is gonna hit on buying. Hit on buying again. And there's the EGA on the TA, gonna focus down. Actually, a lot of damage. he messed up by accident. He invoked Cold Snap instead of Ghost Walk, and he dies because of it. QQ Walk. QQ Dub. Throw out the QQ Dub, Niz. But yeah, I, I think once the Radiant finally groups back up in top lane, we're gonna be looking at the end of this game and moving on into the semifinals. But what a game it has been, Niz. What a game it has been. Medusa. She's here. She's ready. She's
She she wants to be a part of competitive. Well, I mean, she should. Oh, oh Bartlett. Bartlett, please. You know, this might be one of those situations where people would really get upset at me, but I'd be the, the other team who'd call GG and just be like, you guys won this, we're down two racks, these pauses are just kind of like, you know, stressing everyone out. Yeah. And all that. Um, the unfortunate part is, is they're probably going to pick up a stand-in for Bartlett. I mean, Bartlett might have been a stand-in too, for all we know. Well, yeah, but they're gonna—they're just gonna pick someone else up, most likely. A stand-in of a stand-in, is that even? So, is a bench warmer of a bench warmer worse than a bench warmer? It's the water boy, I guess. But yeah, which one's which one's worse for basketball, the water boy or the bench warmer? Because water boy, know. I don't know, dude. You never know. There's so many movies about that water boy who who wanted to be good at the game. But no one ever noticed him. That's true. There's but, never any movies about the bench warmer. That's true. The, I mean, and, and like there's there's movies about dogs. That's true. Playing sports, or bud. You know, to be and, and and for those of you who don't know, even like Tony, Mister Romo, aka as some people say Homo, he was actually a uh, um, a. Uh, sorry, a uh, yeah, boot camp trainer for the Cowboys before he was their quarterback. Like he he would just throw balls to the receivers, and that was it. Hmm. And he got into the NFL by the coach being like, "You're pretty good at throwing the ball." But of course, you have the Tony Romo choke factor. That's, that usually goes poorly for the Cowboys, but that's not here nor there as we have Dota in front of us, not football. Mercy, please taking quite a bit of damage. I'll dig that. But just illusions. Radiant side. They can end this game any time, Miz. And I kind of hope they end it soon because I would like to get into the next game. To be fair, this game is getting really boring. The hype is starting to collapse, Niz, with the DC spam. Yeah, I... I unfortunately, Restart the Router is going to stall things up a little bit, guys. Don't really know what to say. Niz, do you have anything interesting? Good jokes to tell the to the to the crowd. Nope. <laughs> Fire and is. I got nothing. Fire and is. This game's over. GG. I need a GG button, is. Do you think I need a GG button, or do you think I'd abuse it? I think you'd abuse the hell out of it. Let's look at the bracket. See who advanced. I mean, I don't. Last time I checked, about four minutes ago. But I mean, I might be wrong because pauses like totally distort my perception of time. OA. Yeah, OA is playing uh, No Soap China still. So yeah, they haven't changed since I last checked them. In the semis, damn. Not bad. Yeah. Hmm. If they could beat No Soap China. Ooh, looks like... Uh, I mean, I don't know what's going on in the other game, but I think we're probably going to get hot hands. Hand warmers. Ooh, I, I told you. We might not have it's gotten void them. Boys. We good. might not have gotten them last round, but that means we can get them this round. That definitely means we can get them this next round. So, it took him 50 minutes to respond, but Goofy's giving me some insider info. Apparently Tengen used an Agro Trilane Medusa last night in Sevo player uh Sevo playoffs against Heisenberg stack. And of course Ryan New plays for Tengen, so that's where this strat comes from. Yep. Worked out well for them, I presume. I believe so. Can confirm. He actually didn't say who won, but I, I'm assuming that they won with it. Well, Niz can't confirm, so it, it probably I, sucks. I normally follow Sevo playoffs too, and I haven't been. I'm I'm bad. Remove Niz. Remove Nizcast, guys. Riot or remove Niz. 
But yeah, this is this is kind of unfortunate, guys. We apologize. It's extra unfortunate considering we're so close to the end of the game. But I guess we could take this opportunity to also say, as always, guys, um, this is the Thursday. Tomorrow will be the or not tomorrow. Sunday will be the the Sunday edition of it, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern. It is the $200 variation. So a little bit bigger money, a little bit more prestige along with it. So definitely, if you're enjoying this, be uh, be tuning in on Sunday here, as always. Um, but uh, yeah, if you guys are enjoying this cast, please below follow on Twitch TV slash Dota Raptors. It really helps us out a lot. And uh, of course, if you want to be even more helpful, you can check out YouTube.com slash Dota Raptors where all the VODs are. Give our VODs some, uh, some, some light and check them out. Listen to them. Give us critiques, comments, etc. And then, you know, for the one and only, the man Niz, you can check him out and follow him on Twitter at NizCast. And if you like him so much that you want to follow him more than just his Twitter, you can check out Twitch TV slash NizCast and, of course, YouTube.com slash NizCast as that is featured on my YouTube. But, yeah, that pretty much does it for all the random stuff that I can talk about, Niz. Do you have any random stuff that you want to fill in about? Because I would really adore your random stuff. Oh no! No, pause. Oh my god, we're good. I was looking down and playing with a note card because I was like, oh god. Hmm. Oh god, this is going to take forever. But maybe not. Maybe they can end the game. Maybe they can wipe and maybe this dire side will have the comeback of the century. All of that will be determined in the minutes to come. The good thing is, is that the other game isn't done either. So we would have been waiting anyways. Well, Niz, you're the optimist and that's definitely true. To be fair, I could use a little bit of a break to get some water and use the bathroom. Dude, no breaks tonight, apparently. No, 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 no. One game to the next. You know what the worst part about pauses is for casters is like, you know, players can get up, go take breaks, smoke breaks, you know, you know, whatever the player needs, you know, snack break, etc. Casters, we can't, because it sucks to throw it to the to the to the wait screen, because that means I have to cut it out of the bot. It's just smoke oh. breaks. First of all, smoking's bad for you. Second of all, we have a smoking game. Yeah, we do. And this isn't the kind that is cancerous and kills you. This is the kind that conceals you and hides you. Well, it may kill Bien. <laughs> it is cancerous to be in. He is nearby the death. EGA uh, very close to him. Does have vision of him. Is going to throw out the trap, slow him now. It does actually hit on Mercy right, and him. Go. Of go. course, Ryu Noob in the front line is only going to lose 700 mana from that. Not that much. Ravage goes off. Going to hit on three. Immediately, Remnant's back is Cat, but the Ravage hits on ton. Now the Blink Epi Center going to hit on quite a few as well. Corey dropping low, Tide Hunter low as well, but that Death Ward is just cleaning house as the Dire Side is falling one by one. Two are down, the Centaur and the Skywrath Mage. Soon going to be three, but more importantly, their bodies are falling while their racks is crumbling. And with this top racks falling, it'll look like the semifinals for the side of locked up as this stun from Bayan trying to prevent this there's the GG from Mercy and we have a course locked up gonna be able to secure a semi-finals appearance in this Thursday's semi-pro cup series and Niz any final thoughts before we go to the wait and music screen and get you guys the next game of action nope <laughs> game was over a long time ago I think we, we beat this beat this horse to death well guys i'll use this chance of course one more time to say it i appreciate all everyone watching so much all of you guys' um views are always helpful but more importantly if you guys enjoyed this and you don't just want to follow us at all the stupid places that we talk about like our youtube or twitter and our twitch please leave us comments messages about our casting what you guys like what you don't like what you think we could do better what you think we do great all your feedback guys makes us better so you guys get better casts everyone's happy and the world is a utopian place but until then you can check me out at youtube.com slash dota raptors twitch tv slash dota raptors follow below and always check out twitter.com slash nizcast or slash user slash nizcast aka at nizcast as he is awesome but that'll do it for us guys as far as the quarterfinals go and we will see you when the semifinals begin